There we go. Thank you. Well, I'm excited to get to uh, come speak with you guys, young adults at High Street. Uh, just to get an idea of the audience here, uh, how many of us are college students? Like, what's, what's the age range here? All right, got this? Okay. 50%, maybe, I don't know, 50, 60%, right? That's great. I love the college age. You know, I, I graduated from high school in 1999. We partied like it was 1999. That was what we said, you know, we thought we were really cool, right? It just worked that way. Uh, it's 2019, which means it's my 20-year reunion this year, like next week, right? Uh, but I don't think of myself as almost 40. Like I, I, like, I haven't gotten there yet. I still think of myself, I'm like, no, no, I'm like you guys, you know. I'm still this age right here, you know. My, uh, I'm getting to know my neighbors. We just moved here in July. And I'm getting to know my neighbors, and uh, they've got a 10-year-old and a 5-year-old. And to me, if you've got a 10-year-old, eh, you're kind of old, right? Kind of up there. And so we're talking one day, and she's talking about her sister and uh, how it's her 40th, uh, her 40th birthday. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. I was like, hey, so like, wasn't your 40th birthday recently? And she looked at me and goes, I'm not 40. I'm like, oh. And all of a sudden I realized I'm older than her. And I'm like, how did that happen? You know, you've got a 10-year-old. You're old. I've got like a 2-year-old. Oh, I've got my family up here. Uh, give me a, I think it's the, is my family the first picture? I forget. Yeah, look at that. I've got a 2-year-old and like a 4-month-old. Little Penelope, little Bubba, Walker, and uh, there's my wife, Allie. I'm young. Like, I'm going to be the grandpa dad. Like, I am going to be, when Penelope gets to college, I'm 55. Right? Grandpa dad. You know, if we have a third, I'm going to be in my 60s. It's just how it is, you know. Hopefully I can still run. Um, where am I going with all this? I love the college age. I love it. Like, I can't get out of it. Um, and, and I think it's around this time in our life that we start talking about the topic. You know, those four years, that's when we start thinking about the topic of stress. You know, that's really, I think, the first time that, that word starts popping up and going, I feel stressed. Stre I feel it. You know, and I put together a list of maybe the top ten things that stress college students. And for those of you who aren't in college, bear with me. Some of these you'll go, I remember that. And some of them you'll go, that still applies to me today. The top ten, the top ten things, and this is my list, it's not like a special list. But the number ten thing, the bottom of the list is this. What stresses college students? Tests. Right? Happens. You know, I mean, wherever we're at, it's like, ugh, not a test. Come on. That's like the best thing about graduating college. No more tests. You know, we don't have to worry about that. So maybe now we have, like, job performance reviews, you know, once you get out of college. Uh, number nine, you show up to class and you realize you have a test. You know, it's like your friend's like, hey, did you study? And you're like, ah, uh -huh, good one. He goes, no, seriously, I'm stressed, right? Number eight, you walk into the cafeteria, beef and rice again. No, <laughs> I'm so stressed right now. Oh. Number seven, oversleeping. I think that's universal. When you oversleep, it's the worst. You know, your boss, your professor, they're like, it doesn't matter how genuine you are. They look at you and go, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm sure it's the only time you've ever overslept. Number six, in general, making big decisions, right? Like, what's my major going to be? Okay, should I quit my job? Should I quit my job and go back to school and get a better, a, a different degree, a higher degree, right, making big decisions in life? How about number five, relationships ending. Oh, right? It's not you, it's me, you know, it ends like, what, well, biggest stressor ever? Do you like these uh, text messages here? <laughs> or maybe relationships ending, even relationships beginning. The whole relationships world, until you get married, I mean, it is a stressor. Then you get married and you realize marriage is also a stressor, right? Number four, low balance in your bank account, right? <laughs> when you look it up, you're going, I have no money. I feel, I feel stressed. Number three, avoiding the freshman 15. Stressful. You know, uh, there was a, uh, I think Oregon State did a big research about it. And they said, you know, it's not actually 15, really. It's like three to seven pounds. But weight is a stressor. Number two, finding that your midterms are sent to your home address. That's a big stressor right there. It's like, what? Like, listen, listen, Dad. I know it says I made a D, but that only takes into account one test. What did you make on that one test? 
Boy, D. Doesn't, doesn't help. Top stressor for college students, and really I think beyond, you're scrolling through Instagram, maybe you're creeping on somebody, and you accidentally double click, <laughs> and they know, you know, you're looking at a picture from five years ago, right? It's like, oh, I'm so embarrassed, right? Top 10 things for college students, you know. Okay, stress, it's a normal part of life. Okay, you can't avoid it. It, it, it is part of life. You know, uh, if we made a definition of stress, uh, here we go, uh, a state of mental tension and worry caused by problems in your life, work, etc. All those things we talk about. And, and for this crowd, you know, we, we can add in work, time management, parenting, marriage, singleness, you know, we can make jokes about them all day long, and they do. They cause real stress. It's actual stress. You know, and, and there's bigger things we could put on there. There's smaller things. They all add up. It's just important that we understand and we acknowledge there is stress. We all feel it. It is a real thing. Um, as I was preparing this talk, I was getting a, hair, getting a haircut, and I was talking to Tiffany. I was like, hey, Tiffany. You know, she's going at it. Tiffany, do you ever feel stressed? Oh, yeah, I feel stressed. Why don't you tell him about it? She goes, well, I got a 13-year-old daughter that I've raised um, all by myself for the last 13 years. I'm like, ooh, right? That's stressful. She says, you know, um, I've only been cutting hair for about a year now. You know, I started off in cosmetology school, and, like, I was getting ready to graduate. I was getting really close to the end of it, but then I had to have a surgery, and then I'd take some time off and while well, I was recovering. And then when I was getting ready to get back into cosmetology school, the cosmetology school actually closed and because they closed, I was unable to graduate, and so I had to start all the way back over the beginning. I never just got, I never got back to it. And I'm like, man, that's stressful. And, and I go, and how old's your daughter again? She says, 13. I go, wow, so you've got a teenage daughter. She's like, yeah. I'm like, wow, that's stressful. You know, needless to say, I'm not talking to her about taking tests at school, okay? Not only is stress real, but as we grow, as we age, stress becomes more complicated. Stress begins to build, and there's layers. Because I tell college students all the time, when you get out of college, you're going to add career, marriage, and parenting, and a lot of other things on top of your life. And, it, and, the, and the pressure will continue to build. And so, young adults, for everybody here in this room, what, what I would want to challenge you with, stress is a real thing. Learning to manage it the younger that you are is very important. And, and what I want to do is tonight I just want to give you three tips, three ways to help you manage stress. And the first thing that I want to tell you to help you out with stress is this, to stop avoiding it. Uh, Yulia Fielder, uh, she was sleeping in her bed one night and uh, she's in the bed, you know, curled up, uh, you know, everything's quiet. And then she hears the, a sound, creak, <laughs> you know, you know how it's good, what, okay. Pops out of bed, she turns the lights on. I mean, she's searching all around. She goes, dude, I think there's a burglar in my house. She looks all around. She checks all the doors, windows, locks everything, locks, locks, locks. No sound. She gets back in bed. No big deal. Then she hears it again. Creak. Opens the light. She flips on the lights. She looks around. She's like, what is going on? And she looks up into the corner of her, of her room. And the ceiling, it looks like it's kind of like slanting a little bit. And she's like, well, that's weird. I mean, it's the middle of the night. What am I going to do about my ceiling? She goes back to bed. An hour later, there's a crash. And her ceiling falls in. And 50 pounds of honey comes pouring out of the roof. What? What happened? Well, when Miss Fielder, she said, you know, I've noticed bees. It seemed like they were coming in and out of my house when I first moved into my house. 12 years ago. Didn't really do anything about it. It's just bees, I guess. I don't know. But then that summer, she goes, those darn bees. They, I, I see where they're coming in and out. You know what? I'm tired of these bees. And so she, pla she poured some ammonia in. She plastered the hole, and it killed all the bees. Well, there was a lot. There was a huge hive, and the honey soaked through the ceiling and crashed through. Miss Fielder, she avoided the bees for 12 years, and it became a huge problem. Okay? Stress can build up in your life if you avoid it. And it will build up in your life if you avoid it. I mean, when you feel stress, how do you respond? Like, what do you do when you feel it? A lot of people, maybe, maybe you go to Netflix. You know that uh, right now, on average, people spend about two hours a day on Netflix. You know, 
If you think about it, two hours a day is one month of your life. No, no, I'm sorry. One month of your year. Okay. Don't, you, you only have 12. One month of it is spent on Netflix. Right? That's, I mean, I think that's pretty crazy. Any Stranger Things fans? A few. Like, yeah. I mean, okay, okay. I've never watched it either, but I hear it's a really good one. And I'm like, I'm like one weekend binge away from just going, I'm in. I'm going to do it, right? I'm a Netflixer. I like it. But what do you do when you're stressed? Maybe it's not Netflix. Uh, what about Instagram? Okay, when you feel stress, is your first response, dude, I'm going to go check out Instagram real quick. In 2014, 21 minutes was the average time people spent on Instagram. Today, it is 53 minutes. Okay, 53. Okay, you're spending an hour a day looking at pictures on Instagram. Okay. Uh, I can't remember how many days of your life, or that's 13 days of your year. That's a lot. Or maybe when you're stressed, you don't go to Netflix, you don't go to Instagram. Maybe it's eating. You know, you you should do some good old-fashioned stress eating. I'm stressed. Give me the chocolate chip cookies. I'm going to Andy's, you know. Uh, Give it to me, right? I asked Tiffany. She's cutting my hair. I go, hey, Tiffany, man, I just got to know, like, man, when you feel all this stress, what do you do? She goes, I smoke. I'm like, okay, all right, that uh, that works, you know. Okay, (laughs) these methods... They can all distract us from stress, but they do nothing to cure stress, okay? They they do nothing to actually help you with your stress. They just distract you from it, and the stress will build. So don't avoid stress. Don't run away from stress. Don't avoid it. Uh, 1 Peter 5, 7, God says this to us. He says, cast all of your anxieties on me because I care for you. God says, "I, I see that you have stress. Okay, I care about your test that you took. I care about your broken heart. I care about your relationship status right now. I care about how your work's going. I care that your favorite shirt just got a hole put in it. Okay, God says, I care for all of those things. Cast them all on me. Okay, don't avoid them. We can cast them on God. Number two, not only just not avoid it, but number two, talk about it. One of my first years on staff, uh, like I I was on staff for a year, and so all of a sudden for my hometown, they're like, oh, dude, Pace is like a minister. That's great. Hey, let's have him come in and be like the, um, do y'all ever do like a Discipleship Now program? You know, like one of the kids. Anyways, it was a weekend where all the kids, you know, college, uh, older people would come in, and I had like the 10th grade. They're like, Pace, we're going to put you with the 10th grade boys. Okay, they're a rowdy group, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to do it. And so I get, I get to the host home, and I'm trying to be the cool guy, right? Because I'm like, I got the 10th grade guys. And so anyways, the guys are there, we're all sitting around, and they're like, okay, you know, um, okay, Matt, what are we going to do? And like, they're all got, they all got their booklets, and I'm like, everybody put your books down. Guys, I want to know this. Where are the girls at? And they're like, the girls? Oh, we know where the girls are at. I go, we're about to go prank them. And they're like, yeah. And I'm like. I got them right where I want them, okay? We're going to talk about God later, but we're going to have some fun tonight, you know? And so anyways, I'm like, let's go get them. You tell me about that. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to go, let's go do some dry ice bombs. And they're like, what's a dry ice bomb? I'm like, y'all don't know what dry ice bombs are? I go, you just dry ice, boom. And they're like, dude. And so anyways, I'm coaching them up. And so we get all the kids together. We're all right there. And I'm like, they're all kids. They think I'm the coolest guy ever. I'm teaching them how to make bombs here, right? And so anyways... We get all these Coke bottles. We, the girls are there, and, like, we're filling them up with the dry ice. We're pouring the water in. I mean, like, we do. We screw them on top. We throw. I mean, we throw. I mean, it's all the 10th grade boys. I mean, 10, 15 bottles in their yard. We get in the car, and, like, as we're driving off, like, we're just kind of waiting to, to hear the first one, you know, before we drive. Like, and then all of a sudden, we hear the first one. And, well, that first one was pretty loud. I mean, it was a boom. And I'm like, whoa. And then, like, then as we're driving off, you could hear it, boom. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, it's just, I mean, it is rattling off everywhere. And then, like, I'm like, as I'm driving off, I'm like, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> so, but for that night, I was really cool. And uh, the next morning, you know, the pastor and the host family pull me aside and they're like, did you do dry ass moms with the kids last night? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, we had a great time. And they're like, the family thought it was a drive-by shooting. I mean, the kids, the kids were terrified. And I'm like... Needless to say, I've never been, I have never been asked back uh, to do that ever again. 
Now, the power of dry ice bombs, it's all about the pressure. I remember I was giving this talk at, uh, at UCA one year, and the, guys, and the guys were like, dude, are those dry ice bombs real? I go, yeah, they're real. And so we went out and we made a few of them. And so uh, actually, I, I think I have this video here of some dry ice bombs. More? More, more, keep more. Going, going. Halloween right. time, close to this time of year. Oh, we, uh, click it one more time. Uh, one more time. More? More, more, more. Keep going, keep going. I think there's a second video. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, here. Know, we're we're on the pace. We're up to three minutes now. They were doubting me. It was loud. We were in the middle of nowhere, Arkansas, and we got in the car real quick and drove off. I mean, we were like, that was a lot louder than we thought. That's a blast, right? The power of dry ice bombs, okay, it is all about the pressure. Here's the thing is, dry ice bombs, you can put the ice in the bottle, pour water in, and you can just hold it, no problem, okay? I mean, it's just, it's like witch's brew. Ooh, look at the witch's brew, you know, right? No big deal. <laughs> it's as soon as you put that cap on Okay, and when you keep that pressure in, okay, the pressure starts building, okay. But if you can just loosen the cap, no problem, okay. It's all about the pressure. If you avoid stress in your life, the pressure is going to build and eventually you will blow up. Now, what does blow up look like in your life? I mean, when you blow up, I mean, is it rage? You know, or do you, do you keep your cool, you keep your cool, and then all of a sudden, I mean, you just fly off the handle. At your friends, those close to you, is it rage? It, it maybe blow up for you is something in the sexual nature. Uh, maybe it's something with, you know, do you run to sex uh, with, with other people or, or maybe just the internet? Is it something that you're just like, man, I've, I've just, yeah, you know, a, a blow up. Is, is it like some sort of like partying or something like that? I mean, do you find yourself engage, uh, seeking alcohol more than you normally would or, or seeking any other types of drugs? I mean, do you run off that? Like, what does blow up look like in your life? Or is it something much smaller than that? But there's something that you're like, I don't know why I do that. It may be because you're just bottling up stress and it's just the, the pressure builds and you blow up. But when we begin to talk about stress and when we begin to talk about it with other people, it's like releasing that pressure. Um, you know, the last couple of weeks, man, they've just been busy for us, for the Pace family. And my wife, uh, towards the end of last week, she goes, I think it's the weekend, she goes, what's wrong with you? I mean, I was just, I was just, just a, I can't think of a good word. I was, I was rude. I was, I was just inside myself. I was very rude. Um, she said, what's wrong with you? And I'm just like, and finally I'm like, well, uh, and all I could think about it, I was, like, I was like, well, man, I don't know. I was like, all of a sudden, like, I mean, Penelope, she gets up at 6 o'clock every morning. And she's killing me. And sometimes she gets at 5.45 just to ugh, take that dad. We go walking up and down the neighborhood all the way till I go to work at 9. I go to work from 9 to 5. I get home at 5. And then, you know, walking around with Penelope. We, we do things with Penelope. We kind of eat food, you know, as quickly as we can. 8 o'clock, we put her to bed. And I go, Monday, we had leadership at 9.30. Tuesday, we went to intramural game. Wednesday, intramural game. Thursday, we had stumo. And I feel like I, I can't even get it off. You know, and, uh, you know, and I'm just going. And then all of a sudden, you know, we get to the end. And she goes, well, and, I, and I'm, I'm just, Bleh, you know. <laughs> and <laughs> y'all been there, right? <laughs> and then um, we get to the end. And uh, she goes, well, man, is there anything I can do? I mean, is there anything we could do with your schedule? Is there anything, like, we can do? And I just sit there. I go, well, no, I don't think so. I mean, it's just our stage of life right now. We, we've got two young kids. Like, what do you do differently? And, and, and you know, and, and really when I begin to think about it, I'm talking to Allie, and I just go, you know, and we've talked about it a couple of times. You know, there's only going to be a few times in my life when Penelope wants to run up and down the street with me. I mean, we really literally run. I mean, she just, dad, dad, dad. And now she's gotten to a point where she makes me, I have to carry her while I run, you know. You'll see me in my, in my cul-de-sac running around at 7 o'clock in the morning, you know. And the colder it gets, the more I don't like it. But, hey, I'm running around. But that's our stage of life. And I'm just going, maybe there's nothing to do. But there was something about me just talking about it. And, 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 it, and it relieves the pressure. And, and I don't know why, but I just feel, I'm like, Okay, 
And I, and I even told her, like, I'm sorry, I'm just being rude, I'm being mean, and I'm short, I'm not being loving for sure. John Dewey, he said this, a problem well-defined is already half-solved. I clearly defined how I was feeling with my wife. I mean, it's just our stage in life, there's really nothing to change about it, and really, man, I want to enjoy these moments. It's a short stage of our life. My kids will only be this small, I mean, for just a short period. See, most people, if you ask them, hey, what are you stressed about? I mean, what do they say? I'm not stressed. No, no, I ain't got stressed. And even if they could get to the point and go, yeah, okay, maybe I'm a little stressed. Okay, what's stressing you out? Well, I don't know, I'm just stressed. Right? Can't even clearly define it. If you can get to a point to clearly define it, clearly say, this is what's stressing me out. This is what's going on in my life. Okay, it's going to help relieve that pressure. As you think about stress, here's something that's helped me too. Another way to think about stress. Stress is the nickname of fear. If you can think of it like that, what are you stressed about? I'm stressed about work. Hmm, why don't you replace the word stress with fear? I am fearful at work. Okay, why are you fearful at work? Well, I don't know that I am performing up to my performance. Okay. Tell me more about that. I'm fearful that I'm going to fail this. I'm stressed about my test. I'm fearful I'm going to fail. And if I fail, people will think less of me. Now, man, we are getting into some meat right there. Okay, when you start saying that, now you can start applying some of God's truth to that. When it starts coming out, talk about these things. Don't, you know, and when I say talk about it, talk about it to God. God says, uh, Philippians 4, 6 through 7, don't be anxious about anything. And he doesn't say just don't do it. He says, Bring them to me, okay? Talk to me about what's going on in prayer and petition. One thing that helps me out when I'm trying to talk about God, what's going on in my life, I love to journal, okay? If, if, I'm, if I'm just thinking through my thoughts in my head, I mean, I wander all over the place. But if I've got something going on, I'm like, I am writing down, man, God, what's go- what is going on in my life right now, okay? I, I mean, and I'll say a lot of weird things. Okay, it's my journal. You know, if you ever get my journal, then just remember, they're just stress thoughts. They're just thoughts, you know. I think I'm scared of speaking at High Street tomorrow. Oh, am I? What, what am I doing? What, do? what do you mean am I scared? Well, why would I be scared, right? But I just write it down, you know. I, I feel like this is going on in my life. I, I, I don't know if I'm being a good father right now. I, don't, I mean, like, I'm just writing things. But I'm just trying to figure out what's going on in my head. And I'm, and I'm trying to engage with God on this. I'm putting it on paper. It's me and God. We're talking. You know, last part of this verse, it says, uh, in the peace of God. Okay, when we bring things to prayer to God, there's something powerful about that. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. There's something powerful when we bring things to God. And not just to God, you've got to bring them to other people. Um, Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, you know, it's a popular verse. Don't neglect meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. We should be encouraging one another. We need to be unraveling our life to, to each other. Hey, this is what I'm scared of. This is what I'm fearful of. This is what's going on in my life. It's so helpful when you verbalize it to someone else. Because then someone else can look at you and go, eh, dude, that's kind of crazy. That's not, eh. I don't know what you're thinking, dude. You're a great father. You're doing great. It's a difficult time in your life right now. How can, I, how can I help you? There's something powerful just knowing somebody is with you. Someone's walking alongside you. So if you want to relieve the pressure built up by stress, you've got to talk about it. Talk about it to God. Talk about it about your stress to God. Talk about it with other people. You've got to get it out. Don't let the pressure build. Third, third step is this. You know, and really, we, we've only talked about reactive things so far. When we feel stress, don't avoid it, talk about it. But we haven't talked about proactive things. Third point is this, is proactively, invest in your priorities. Third tip is this, invest in your priorities. Um, a couple of years ago, um, Mike DeVries and co-pilot James McDowell, a pilot and co-pilot, they were taking off from Hanscom Field, and the plane, it begins to pick up speed, you know, normal, just shh. And the co-pilot looks at the pilot and says, rotate, which apparently is the word that means, okay, it's time to pull up. You know, we've built up the speed, it's time to start pulling up. The pilot grabs the wheel and he starts to pull and he says, the the lock is on. And he pulls it again and he says, well, the lock is on. 
and he keeps pulling, 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 pulling. Uh, the recording, seven times he says, the, the lock is on. The, the lock is on. The, had he applied the brake, the first time he said the lock was on, if he'd have pulled the brake, put the, uh, put the engine in reverse, there would have been no problem. The last words recorded are, I can't stop. Oh no, oh no. And the Gulfstream 4 came to rest in the gully 2,000 feet below the runway, where it then burst into flames. You know, investigators, they begin reviewing the black box. And before the takeoff, you know, the pilots are in there, they're talking to each other, and there's a red blinking light. You know, and, and you can hear the co-pilot, and he says this. He says, hey, it, it says that the rudder limit light is on. But they ignored it. Eh, you know, who knows. You know, stress is, in a way, our body's blinking red light. Okay? It's signaling Something is wrong, okay? Something is going on. And, and don't worry, I'm, I'm not saying if you avoid stress, that's going to end up being you. That's not what I mean, you know. Um, but what I'm saying is whether you know it or not, if you don't invest in your priorities, um, you know, your body and your mind, they know it, okay? If you're, not, if you're not taking your time and putting it in your priorities, your body and your mind, they know it. They know something's off. And, and it's just, okay, something's not right. Okay? You're going to feel it. When your time is consumed by non-priorities, stress begins to just go, something's not right. Okay? You are not living by priorities. Okay? You are wasting your time. And the blinking is going on. I wish that we could do everything in life. I mean, you can think about it. All the things that you want to do right now, I mean, I've got a long list, right? I mean, I've got a, I got a ton. Oh, man. I mean, you know, I'm from Arkansas. I love bow hunting deer. I think about it a lot. If anybody has any hunting land, come talk to me afterwards. Small pub. No, I'm just, uh, no, but seriously, no. Uh, I wish I could spend all my time just in the deer woods. It would be awesome, okay? I mean, it's on my list. Like, what do I want to do? I want to go out there in the deer woods. I want it, man, I want to be out there. Um, th there's a lot of things, right? I wish we had time for everything. I wish that we could push pause. I, I wish we could push pause and just do all the things. But, but time is a fixed thing in our life. And, and that's why we have to think about prioritizing. When you're living by your priorities, all systems are go. Okay, the blinking red light is not going. If you're hitting your main priorities in life, but you're not accomplishing lower priorities? I mean, it's okay. Uh, a, a few years ago, and by a few, I mean probably like a decade ago, uh, I was into like a, <laughs> uh, I was into running marathons. And, uh, you know, I mean, but that was everything. I mean, I'm like, I, I wake up, I mean, there were times where I'm like 11 o'clock at night, I'm like, all right, dude, I'm going out on a run. I mean, everything. I mean, I'm running, I'm dieting, I'm doing everything. I've, I've got like the, the schedule, and I've got the morning, the evening, speed, and all these things, and it's everything, and I'm, and I'm doing it, and like, it feels so good, because I'm like, going boom, 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 and you know what, and it's high on my priority list, but when I looked around my life, and my, my car was dirty, well, I didn't care about that, I mean, the cleanliness of my car, way down here, okay, training for my marathon, way up here, and it felt good that I was doing high, and at that time, like, high priority things, who cares about the low priority things, okay, Prioritize your life. Invest in your priorities. As you think about the last two months, I want you to think about August and September. Has there been a blinking red light going on? Okay, as you think about stress, have you felt this, man, I just feel that. I feel stress. In the last two months, if your life, where your life and priorities have been, if they don't match up, you will have stress. And right now, you know, even if mentally, if you were to think about it mentally, you know, you don't have to write it. Or if you've got a pen and paper, you can write it down. But if you think about the last two months, where has your time and energy gone? As you think about priorities, has it been work or hobbies or school or, uh, uh, you know, approval? Like I've been trying to make people like I mean, what's been the top priorities? The one, the two, the three, the four, the five. I mean, what has, where, in the last two months, where has your time gone? You get to choose it. 
as you look back, where did it go the last two months? And then if right now you could go, but if I could choose where the last two months should have gone, boom, this is where it had been. Are, are they the same? Or are you like, oh, man, I wish I would have prioritized this, but instead I prioritized this, and that's why I feel some of the stress. You know, Jesus gives us a challenge. Here's what he says. He says, what would it profit you to gain the whole world but forfeit your soul? I mean, if you were to gain everything, I mean, you think about some of your priorities. If you were to make school your top, top priority, get a 4.0, get into the best med school on scholarship, become the world's best surgeon, what good would that be if you forfeited your soul? What if you made friends your top priority? I want everybody to like me. Okay, I want to become the coolest person, the most fun person. I want to have the most real followers on Instagram. I want everyone who's anyone to know who I am. Okay, I want the guys to want to be me. I want the girls to want to date me. What good would that be if you forfeited your soul? What, what good would it be if you put work as the top priority, okay? Every, we, every year you're making sales goals, okay? You're climbing up the corporate ladder. Eventually you become the CEO and boss number one, you know, and you're running the company. Who cares if you forfeit your soul? You know, Jesus is saying this, whatever you think your priorities need to be, I need to be the highest. I need to be number one. Put me on top. And most of us would say, yes, God is my number one priority, but if you look over the last two months, is that where God's been? Is that where, you, is that where you've invested your time? You know, Jesus says, come to me, all you who are labor and are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Jesus assumes stress. His answer is Come to me, okay? Come to me. Whatever your list of priorities are, whatever's important to you in life, throw them out, put me as number one. Come to me, not Netflix. Come to me, not Instagram, not food. Jesus says, come to me, put me as number one. You know, you think about it, I think the number one thing, I, th I think the, the biggest key for stress is this. And I think it's what Jesus is saying here. What, what good is it to, to gain the whole world but forfeit their soul? And, and, and really, I think what, one thing that Jesus says, why would you worry if you lost the whole world but gained your soul? Okay, if you lost everything but you got your soul, the one, one thing that's most important, why would you worry? I think the key to stress is this. If we can secure the most important thing, secure the most important thing, Jesus, number one, following him, number one, everything else is going to fall in place in life. You know, if, if, as you think about where we're at right now, um, I, I love talking to the leaders here at, uh, at Young Adults. And one of the things I was like, hey, so like, man, what are some like practical, applicable steps? Man, if people are like, man, I, I just want to apply. I want to, you know, and uh, they're like, well, we've got five things. And I'm like, okay, cool. What are the five things? And like, First person told me. And the next person I go, hey, so what do y'all do? They got, we got five things. I even saw in the announcements, we got five things. I'm like, man, five things. I love these five things, you know. They said this, attend, which, boom, you're already doing it, right? Love it. You're attending. You're here. Second thing, they say join a group. If you're not in a small group, man, I would say join one. If you're like, I've already joined one. Okay, attend it, right? Uh, there, there's going to be people over here the next step. I'd say, man, if you're not in a group, get in a group. Daily disciplines. If you're not doing daily disciplines, if you don't even know what daily disciplines to do, you know, start with the quiet time, okay? Find, you know, find, some, find some verses to go over. Let that be your daily disciplines. I love find the one, okay? If you're not seeking to share what Christ has done in your life to other people, if you're not looking to share the hope that you have with other people, I challenge you, do it. it it's going to, I mean... Whatever's stressing you out, man, if you start sharing Christ with other people, you're going to go, man, I feel like a million bucks. Uh, number five, find ways to, to serve, okay? Join the team, okay? Find ways to serve. As we grow, as we get older, stress is only going to build in our lives. So right now, at this young part of your life right now, let's all learn how to deal with stress. 
Don't avoid it, okay? Talk about it with other people. Invest in your priorities. And, and, and I want to beg you, number one, wherever Jesus and wherever his priorities and wherever his kingdom is, let that be just the number one thing that you put above everything else. All of us have stress, so let's learn to manage it. Let me pray for us, and then I think we're, uh, we're going to keep going into worship.